Hi, Glitter Girls. <laughs> and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be telling our kidnapping stories. I've only been ever attempted kidnapped like three times. Only ever three times. <laughs> and um, Izzy experienced, I think, her first kidnapping experience today. <laughs> yeah. So since it's more traumatizing for her, we're going to let her go first. Okay. Izzy, take it away. Our kidnapping, kidnapping stories. <laughs> holy shit. I just want to start off with holy fucking shit. Like, nothing crazy really happened. But then again, I don't really know that because I didn't really wait to find out. But basically, the story is, it's the first of the month today, and I needed to get rent. And I work at a restaurant, so I make half my money in cash, and the other half goes, like, through direct deposit. So basically, times were tight, and I needed to go pull out my tip money fast as hell so I can get it into my bank account as soon as possible. And mind you, I don't have a car right now. So I had to walk, and I took my dog, and me and my dog were just walking, and... The closest one was, it said on my maps it was 19 minutes, but I think I got there way faster than that. So, it, I do. Like, it was not that long of a walk. But, um, so I got over there, and basically, I didn't know where it was at, because where the maps made it seem like while I was walking was that the Bank of America was inside of the mall. So I'm walking my little butt inside the mall thinking that's where the Bank of America is at. And I took this shortcut instead of going down the street like on the sidewalk and then going in. I just cut through parking lots to get to the very front of like the stores. Mistake number one. Don't walk in a parking lot. Yeah. Well, I walk was on, on the, the main phone. Road. I was on the phone the whole time. Number two. Don't be on your phone so you don't look like a vulnerable target. <laughs> Keep and going. <laughs> I was talking to my best friend. And, um, yeah. So, I was on the phone. I was cutting through the parking lot, which was not that big, but it was still really empty, which, honestly, I look back at that and that was really stupid. That was, like, the dumbest thing I could have ever done. But, anyways, I was walking through this empty parking lot to get inside of the mall and this car it was like a big kind of like suv car and the back was tinted and he was the only one in the front seat i have no idea if there was anybody in the back seat so i'm just gonna think the worst about the situation so he slowly drives by me and i'm on the phone and he looks like he's on the phone but he also is like trying to talk to me at the same time and i see that and i just start it looked more like he had a question but it was still kind of like i don't know what the fuck y'all are trying to pull like you can be like hey do you know how i can get you i'm gonna pull up right here you're gonna ask me where to get someplace and then you're just gonna pull me into your car you know there might be people in the back i have no idea i have no clue i don't i don't want to take the risk so I could see that he's trying to talk to me and I look, I acknowledge it and I just walk really fast and I'm on the phone. I'm just like, I can't do this. This shit's freaking me out. This is scary. Like I, it was from the start, I just caught that energy and I was like, mm -mm. um, something made me want to turn around and make sure he was driving away and he wasn't. He actually made a U-turn and was coming back around from that point. I just took off. I ran into the mall and that was really fucking scary i literally was panicking i was on the phone with my best friend and then also my boyfriend just back and forth because they're both freaking out and I, my body was literally sweating like i could uncontrollably like i was just panicking my body was sweating i was so irritated so frustrated i'm usually really nice towards people was not fucking having it at all i didn't give a flying hoot what i was saying in this mall i was just on the phone just freaking out like I didn't know if he was gonna be like driving around because there's a lot of exits and entrances I didn't know if he was gonna like try to find it try to get out and come back in or what he was gonna do you know that's just really scary plus I still had to take care of that money situation so I had to go back to the bank and do that and luckily I did not see him again however that shit is scary I ran for my life you should also too if you ever just get that vibe like this is not it you just go you just run run kitties honestly after hearing your story my story doesn't sound that intriguing anymore well i still want to know <laughs> but it's just that it happened hella long ago it's so like it, you know details are kind of vague and it's like whatever but essentially what had happened was there was this like target um 
shopping center area near like my old house when I lived where I used to live when I was younger and um it would be like maybe like a five minute walk to go to like Target because you'd like walk behind because basically like I could see the back of the building so like Target and like Ulta and all the buildings that were there like I could see like behind the buildings essentially and so um one time we were walking to the uh, Target and this car, like I don't even know how to describe it. Like basically if it was like a hatchback, but the hatchback like part of it wasn't there. So it had like this like slope thing in the back of the thing. And it like it was, anyways, a very distinctive color. It was like a golden like cream color. And um, there was this monkey that was in the back of it in the corner. And it was like the white one that would like stick to like the window, you know what I mean? And, um, so he, like, pulled up, slowed down, was, like, trying to talk to me and my brother, because my brother was, like, two years older than me, so we were, like, walking, he tried to talk to us, and then we, like, were, like, oh, like, you know, we can't talk to strangers being, like, those kids, you know, and then we started running over into, like, the, like, little grassy area that was, like, across the street from our house, and so we didn't see him after that. And then maybe like a couple days go by and we're playing out front and we see him like doing like a circle around like our neighborhood. And like we had seen this guy maybe like like three times he like made contact with us and we had seen him like a cool like seven or eight times like driving around like our neighborhood. And we only knew it was him because his car was so distinctive and like the monkey in the back and everything like that. Like we knew that was him. But like, you know, he never tried to like get out of the car and like snatch me or anything like that. But like That's still creepy. You know. It's just it's still it's just like some people are like, Oh, you're like so over dramatic, like you don't know, like you don't know, like they could have just been but it's like okay, but what kind of a grown man sees that you don't want to make contact with them and continues to make a U-turn to still try to pursue the conversation. Even if it was just a chill conversation of, hey, do you know how to get from here to there or whatever it is, if you can see this person is so clearly like uncomfortable, not trying to talk to you, like doesn't want anything to do with it, why would you make a U-turn? Why would, you know, like, I'm just saying for, like, your case and mine, like, they both made U-turns. Like, that shit is just weird. Like, creepy. Like, they just, like... Yeah, like, that's just weird. Like, and that gives me a fucking weird-ass feeling for real. Like, that's not normal behavior from an old man. Sorry, but it's not. No, senor, it's not. I'm not about to let my guard down. Just because, you know, I'm being dumb. Exactly. Heck no, I'm just gonna fucking run. And he drives away because he freaking, you know, like someone had to have seen me just take off from him, you know? And even if not, like, he still probably felt like weird, even if it was nothing. Like, he was trying, like, why is this girl running? I was just making a U turn because I was going the wrong way. <laughs> Nah, because he still looked like he was trying to talk to me. That's why I was like, mm-mm. You're like, bitch. Yeah, you're not even going to get the... Stupid. I ain't going to let you get the chance. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That was scary. Well, that was our video about the times that we've almost been kidnapped. Um, anything you want to say to close this out, Izzy? One, maybe uh, don't walk through parking lots. Two, especially on the first of the month with lots of money. And uh, three, <laughs> don't be on your phone so you don't look like a vulnerable target. Um, to be fair, though, I think if I wasn't on the phone, I would have had way more anxiety about the situation than, like, mm -hmm. you know, being on the phone and, like, talking to someone real time as that shit was happening because in my opinion i know that might make you look like a target that you're on the phone but just for me personally i like i work at night but i live right by my job and i still call somebody when i'm walking home because regardless of like me looking like a target i would rather someone be on the phone with me and i'm like oh fuck this is you know like or like you know like something is about to happen or hey this person you know like give them some kind of thing before I'm taken or before like they get no contact with me at least they know something happened rather than like me not being on the phone me not talking to anybody like nobody being around nobody's gonna know what happened to me you know what I'm saying I would rather that be the case where I'm on the phone and something goes down than 
like anything else because even if like they can still call for me they can call like my sister my family you know like they can try to do something at that point because they know what happened rather than like oh I haven't heard from her either where is she nobody's heard from her like you know that's just in my opinion like even if that makes you look like a target I would rather someone know than just wonder you know because even if I could be like oh they look like this give them a description you know mm -hmm. something right before I'm out or like I'm wearing this this is what I'm wearing mm -hmm. something like that but mm -hmm. that might just be me because I don't I mean I could understand why that makes you look like a target but I'm not like looking down and like just being hella distracted like I was literally just going about my day like it might not even even look like I was on my phone but even still just I like that peace of mind if like something were to happen to me I can say something to somebody makes sense because that's just how scary Cassie like what if what if just if you think about it like with like your little nephew wouldn't you rather him be on the phone with you like they look like this Cassie they're driving this car Cassie they've mm -hmm. You know, like before he goes. I don't think and, you're wrong. I agree with what you're saying. I just uh, when like people see you like that, though, like it makes you them think that you're gonna be easily taken because like you're just like not paying attention. So like obviously, if you're on the phone, just like also be paying attention to your surroundings, so that way you can know if something is gonna happen or not. You yeah, know? I was the show on Facetime. I like to talk on speakerphone when I'm out for some reason. Yeah. So I'm kind of like always alert, but I'm usually really alert with those situations to begin with. Like that really freaking scares me. Like the idea of all of these people on Twitter, like retweet, like I can't believe so-and-so went missing. Like this is crazy. And then, you know, like it's everywhere and it's always been everywhere. And that is freaking scary that people are losing their loved ones and their friends every single day because... And they have no idea most of the time. What yeah, happened. where they're at, where they're, you know, like, what's going on with them. And we all just have to assume the worst. And that's freaking scary. And, you know, like, even if, like, even though and even if nothing were to have happened today, that doesn't change the fact that I have to live in fear as a girl being young, being by myself, that this could happen to me at any moment in time. And that is really scary. I just don't know. You don't know if someone's going to sit down and watch what you have to say because sometimes people are mean as hell and they just be like watching just to hate on you. And I don't have the mental capacity right now to take that. Okay, I'm a, I'm a very going, fragile set of mind. I'm serious. So subscribe. It'll be down below. 